Good morning, my name is John Noga. I'm an independent curator of contemporary art and I'm here at the John J. McDonough Museum of Art on the campus of Youngstown State University in Youngstown, Ohio with Sean Crum, one of the artists featured in the exhibition here at the museum at this moment. This grouping of paintings is called my, Our Blood Soaked Blood Soaked Land is Haunted by My Muses. Earlier, we actually solicited questions from fellow curators, artists, friends, family about Sean's work, because I think with any artist, there's always a ton of questions about the work. You can see two of the examples behind us right now. And so I'm gonna start off talking a little bit about, I guess I do have to admit, I'm not only a curator, but I'm also Sean's partner. So I live with this work daily, watching him paint it in our living room. And I've mentioned to many people who have visited this gallery and looked at these works that underneath each of these paintings is probably five other paintings covered over. We had several questions, Sean, about people asking, when do you know a painting is finished? When is it finished? And when have you ever had a moment where you thought, I should have stopped earlier or I regret covering this up? Um, there, because I take a lot of pictures of them, I've definitely thought that I should have stopped at this point, but I think the paintings stop themselves when they're ready. I don't think that I myself, per se, control these paintings. They're kind of like, um, like living entities of their own. Mm -hmm. So I allow them to live an entire life, and when they're done, they're done. Interesting. Um, curiously, these paintings are now on exhibit here in the gallery. Could you see yourself in the next few months maybe actually making more changes? No, no, they're done. They're done, yeah, good. Also, we had a lot of questions about, people are seeing a lot of religious iconography or references to sort of spiritual and religious themes throughout a lot of these works. Specifically, the crown of thorns, is a reoccurring theme, crowns, and there's definitely this element of spirituality. Would you sort of like to talk about that? Um, well, I grew up in a kind of non-traditional black church. Um, uh, and and, 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 and being in a, a church that, that like it's non-secular and they taught us to think of ourselves as separate from the world. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm still kind of in that mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, where was I going with this? <laughs> uh, I think that, 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 that still lives on. A lot of people have asked about like um, the constant crown thing, and it, it really just comes down to like something that my grandmother would say at church all the time, which is like, no man steal your crown. And so that is the point of where my pride comes from. That's how I identify myself. Mm -hmm. So, um, and she died recently, and so it's even more so in my head now. Um, but I, I think that religion and spirituality has always played a big role in my life. Even when I decided that the church wasn't for me, I moved into um, studying different African religions. And so I, I, I don't know how to understand the world without the aspect of spirituality. Not per se religion, but spirituality. Mm -hmm. There was also a lot of questions that, that asked in different ways, does the geography or the place that you're at at the moment. You've lived, you've lived in Youngstown, you've lived in New Orleans, San Diego, Columbus, you know, different locations. Does that truly like affect what you're painting and how you're feeling about the paintings? And also specifically maybe kind of at the end of that answer, talk about, because you are a native of Youngstown and back in Youngstown now, how specifically Youngstown is affecting, the, th the idea of being here in Youngstown is affecting your work. Well, I, th I think I'm pretty Youngstown proud. And so wherever I've gone in the world, I've always compared it to like the life that I had in Youngstown, even when it's not, or even when it's way better than the life that I experienced in Youngstown. But um, I don't know, Youngstown for me, it, it, it has, um, it is a lot of loneliness. Um, uh, I felt like, um, kind of like a misfit here, mm -hmm. but eventually I found my way out of it, and that is why I moved to different places. Mm -hmm. do, do you want more than that? <laughs> did, you, did you see changes 
do you feel like when you look at your work from that you painted in different areas that there is a difference? Well, yeah, because in every city the struggle is different. Mm -hmm. And I sadly, like in every city I've struggled and that depends on like the size of the place I'm working in because I always work from home. Mm -hmm. Like how big is my workspace? Like in New York, my, my workspace was my bedroom and that bedroom was just like a bed and a canvas mm -hmm. like kneeling on the floor and sitting on a bucket. When my dog wanted to enter the room, I would have to leave the room and let the dog come in to jump on the bed and then I'd sit down and paint again. And so in, in that aspect of it, like I think um, the space changes and mm -hmm. that kind of changes the way that I paint. Mm -hmm. But also every city has its own, um, like being a black homosexual, every city has its annoyances mm -hmm. and, and liberties, mm -hmm. but more so annoyances. And so I would go home and paint about them. Mm -hmm. We also had quite a few questions, um, one from a very good friend of ours, about why you choose a lot of these paintings to include your face or your figure. They're, they're a type of self-portrait. And I know that living with you, I often tease you that they're self-portraits, teasingly and lovingly, that, that you're sort of self-centered, which I don't mean. But I think sometimes people do kind of read that into the work. Why is he always painting himself? It, even though it is a very much a tradition in the canon of painting, to paint oneself. Do, would you like to talk about how you're using your, your own face or your own representation to talk about things that are important to you? Well, I, I just don't care anymore whether or not I come off as self-centered because maybe I am a little self-centered, but I think that everybody should pay attention to themselves a little bit more and less to everybody else. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I paint myself because I, I'm trying to understand the world through my eyes and trying to tell my own story, that's my biggest thing, is to be able to tell my story, especially as a black man. Like, people have always been explaining what our lives are like, even when they're trying to talk on our side. Mm -hmm. They're trying to explain to people what, how, what it's like to be black, but I'm a black person, I can just tell you. Mm -hmm. And that story is different from every other black person. Mm -hmm. and, and it's different from every other gay person. And so just, I think that people should just deal with it. Like, I'm, I'm talking about myself, yeah. And if you're talking about yourself, I want to hear your story. Curiously, when you look at some of these now that are self-portraits of yourself, do you sort of see past the self-portrait in a way? Like, is the idea more important than it's you? Yes, yes. That's what I would have thought. Curiously enough, um, certainly you have talked about many times that the elements of being an African-American male in the United States and identifying as queer is inherent in all of these works. Would you like to talk a little bit more about sort of that theme and how it manifests itself in, in your work? And specifically, what kind of shift in people's mind are you hoping to maybe cause by sort of repeating that theme? And I realize it's, it's who you are. Mm -hmm. and, and how can you avoid that? But I, I just, we had quite a few questions about, you know, where do you see, like, yourself in this moment in history identifying that way right now and maybe opposed to 10 years ago or 20 years ago? Well, I have, a, I have the, the privilege of, like, through, through media and the internet, like books and documentaries, I have the opportunity to see what it was like for other mm -hmm. gay, black, homosexuals, mm -hmm. or like gay, black, queer people, or transgender, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I get to see them telling their story. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it gives me a, a way to understand where I'm coming from, mm -hmm. and to understand what my faults are as well. And, I, and I'll put that on canvas. I don't think that I'm a perfect person. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that I'm just trying to be very honest, mm -hmm. which I think that most people are just trying to, like, um, explain how much they know or how much they understand or how much they, smart they are. Like, I'm just like a person trying to find his way through life. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a problem with that. Now, put it on canvas and you can see it if you want to. It's just not embarrassing to me. It's, it's about telling my story and my story is my story. And I'm multifaceted and flawed. One of the people that submitted the question did mention um, brought up something that I know you're familiar with, I'm familiar with, is sort of an important film from the late 80s, Marlon Briggs documentary, um, Tongues Untied, which I know you watched. I watched at that point when it premiered, the controversy around it. 
thinking about that film, how did you think about that African American gay experience then, and how do you think about it now? What do you think has changed? I don't think much has changed at all. Mm -hmm. it, it, and, and why was that film controversial? And, and, and if it's an, an idea of like um, other black people saying like this is not the black story that we want to tell, who cares? Mm -hmm. It's not your story. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to like be a savior for black people. I'm not here to be like a messiah for anyone. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell my story and this is it. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I, I benefit from the idea that he made that film and I could watch that while I painted it. Mm -hmm. And it, it made me free in some ways. Mm -hmm. And I understand the, the, the um, problems that he went through mm -hmm. as well, especially with the AIDS epidemic. And I, I didn't live through that in the same way that you did. Right. But it was something that was constantly on my mind. Right. Which is, I think, this, this question is also a perfect transition. We did get a lot of inquiries about people asking about what inspires you while you're working? What specifically, like what documentaries, what type of music, what type of literature? When you look back over your painting career, like can you choose maybe just three things, whether they be documentaries or music, that that actually really, in your mind, influenced the way that you paint? Music, definitely. Mm -hmm. And that's music all across the board. Like, um, I, I, I like French pop. I like some Mexican pop. Um, uh, I, Aretha Franklin, like techno. Mm -hmm. Like, I listen to all music. But, and that, that, that uh, music is kind of just a mooder. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I make these paintings when I get off work at night. I bartend, so. I get off work at night and I stay up till four o'clock in the morning. So right. music is important to keep me going. Right. But um, I, I think that all sorts of media influences me. Mm -hmm. But I think it's about like being open to what you're being fed. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like music isn't something cool. It, it's like opening yourself up to someone else's creativity mm -hmm. and like. Uh, growing up on the east side, and the east side being like the vast wasteland that it, uh, it is, and kind of like separate from the rest of Youngstown. Mm -hmm. By the time that I got into college and then started going to rock shows, it kind of blew my mind up. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And so when I, when I put on like a, a, a rock album while I paint, that, that kind of reminds me of that. Like you mm -hmm. remember that there's always something else that can open you up. And free you to do what you want to do, free you to tell your story in different ways. Right. I'm always curious, especially when people are looking at art, I think their first inclination is to attach it to something that they know. They want to like create a reference to something that's in their knowledge base. I know in the past a lot of people who have said, have compared you, brought up Jean-Michel Basquiat. And seemingly, at first, why I can maybe understand why they think it. Your work really is very much different than his. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel, and why do you think people do that? Because I'm black. <laughs> That's it. That's just because I'm black. And because people don't familiarize themselves with black art very much. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it's something they do on purpose, it's just not something that's pushed mm -hmm. in society. So when you see another black artist, you think of like that other black artist that you like to compare it to. Mm -hmm. And um, and like someone brought up the crowns yesterday and I told them like even with uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat, like I think that that sort of crown motif in black art is just something that is in us. I think that a lot of what I do is something that's in my DNA. Mm -hmm. And as a black person, I think there's a lot of things that are in our DNA that mm -hmm. we just do, that we just know. I think that we carry a lot of things from Africa, mm -hmm. like, that, like a, a lot of our rituals. We don't know where they come from, but they can usually be traced back to Africa. Mm -hmm. Like in the 90s, like the pour out a little liquor, like that goes directly back to ancestor worship right. from the Yoruba tribe. Right. And so I, I just kind of like to let that flow. Right. And then I'll study it, I'll think about it for a while, but it, it, it's not something that I try to stop from happening. Right. I just want to be honest with it, even if I don't understand it. Right. The one thing that I think is really interesting to mention is that this is your second show in a university setting, in a gallery located in the university. The first one was at Kent State, their Trumbull campus. Traditionally, kind of in, in sort of the canon and of academia, the work that is shown in these spaces comes from people who've gone through the process of getting a bachelor's, usually an MFA, 
But here you are having had two shows very widely received and you pretty much, you are self-taught. Do you have any feelings about showing in a space like this that you know normally quite often can be reserved for people who have had formal training? Well, when I, when I came back to Youngstown, my number one goal was to land a show at the McDonough. Mm -hmm. And so I've done that, but I, I don't know, I hope that for other people, like some of the people that I saw, some of the black people that I saw that came to the show yesterday, I watched their reaction to it. Mm -hmm. And I just want them to know that whatever it is, like you just do the work. The work is what matters. And like, you, you don't have to care about like how it's received, but the attention will come. Mm -hmm. It's about telling your story, and not enough of us are doing that. We can't all be rappers, and I don't think that a lot of rappers are telling their story. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just humble yourself and put it out there. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what the world needs from us, because they clearly don't understand what our lives are like. Mm -hmm. They don't understand who we are. So just put it out there, be as honest as you can, even if it's embarrassing. Like, I don't... I, 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 sometimes I get embarrassed, like someone asked if they could bring their kid to the show, and I was like, oh, well, there's two dicks in the show. But like, that's just gonna have to happen. Right. It's just about being honest mm -hmm. and putting it on canvas, putting in music, just do what you do. Who cares? Curiously, you've said to me on several occasions that the one thing that frustrates you as an African-American man in the United States is that quite often, there's so many people who want to to co-opt the narrative and, and tell your story or stories of your community without truly letting the people who are involved speak. I'd like to sort of, for you to answer this question in two ways. How do you, what do you think is the difference between a normal white person who comes to this gallery and looks at this work and the message that they take away and somebody who is African American? You certainly are telling your own story. Do you think they walk away with different ideas? What do you mean? Uh, different ideas of what the content of the paintings? Yeah, probably, uh, hopefully. Because I, I think that there are themes in the paintings that everybody can relate to, especially African Americans. But, like I said, I think just be honest. And I think that, that, that honesty in being black, mm -hmm. like talking about your fears and your hopes, like uh, your desires is good enough because we don't get to do that very often. Mm -hmm. We can't all just be like basketball players or rich or hot. Like sometimes we're just nerds. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it, it's okay to be smart mm -hmm. and to be black and to be not like a player. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Right. I, I, I'm very anxious for your parents have not yet visited this exhibition, and, and you've talked to me about how certainly in their lives, they both had creative impulses, had, you know, creativity was a part of their soul. Walking into this gallery and seeing this work, which in some ways I know they are somewhat unfamiliar with, what do you think they'll walk away with? I don't know. I think, I think my dad will understand it. I think that he is um, very proud that I'm pursuing Mm -hmm. art mm -hmm. because I think very much that he is an artist and my mom as well um, I think that she's probably more worried about what people think mm -hmm. do you know what I mean but as I've gotten older she seems to accept that I am going to be my own person mm -hmm. and I think she celebrates that curiously these I know for any artist having an exhibit like this is usually the closing of a chapter in some way it's most of the paintings here, the majority of them, you've completed in the past 18 months. You know, under the interesting era that we live in, COVID-19, pandemic, not maybe working as much, being at home more. And so as you look around this room and see these paintings, which you've admitted, you're sort of, you're done, they're finished. What do you see yourself moving forward into? What different themes or maybe mediums or way of working might you explore? Uh, I think that I'm probably going to work more with collage. Um, I'd probably like to work with video more, mm -hmm. and I do that on my own sometimes. It's mm -hmm. not seen very much. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't want to say that the show gives me kind of like um, 
some kind of like uh, what am I what am I trying to say? Closure. Not closure, yeah. like not a sense of pride, but like a sense that the work is important, so just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's the message that I want to get across to like anyone that's paying attention. Just do the work, and who cares where it takes you? Just do the work because what else in this life is good? And isn't that who we are? Like I mean, like when you think about art and you think about Africa, like which is where my bloodline comes from. That is who we are. We are a creative people. Mm -hmm. So why shouldn't I be doing this? Why would I be in a boardroom, like making money for someone else, mm -hmm. or just stealing money from people? Mm -hmm. Like what I should be doing is creating and like contributing to this world. Mm -hmm. Curiously enough, the exhibit's only been open one day, and you've already sold the work. And can you talk about your feelings about knowing? that some of these works may leave your physical space and go on to have lives in somebody else's home or in somebody else's home or the area, you know, where they live or maybe where they work. I don't know, I think if it goes to someone that it means something to them, then that's always good. Why would I, why would I not want that? Mm -hmm. And like, I, I maybe a tendency to get too attached to them, but at this point, like, I just need more space. <laughs> um, I, I noticed yesterday at the opening that, that there was, people really connected with the work in, in a very strong way. And I know in art now, there, there's a lot of work that's very formal or sort of based in, in a conceptual idea. And, you know, sometimes I think, I think through living with you, I've, I've appreciated, I've come to appreciate more sort of a very complicated, complex narrative in painting. Um, yeah, could you ever imagine yourself moving away from this style or, and doing something more abstract or? You sure. should. Yeah, I hope so. But um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that I could categorize what I'm doing anyway. Mm -hmm. And who cares about any of that? I think to anyone that's paying attention, like, especially being African American, we create the trends. Like, whatever I'm doing is what's now. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. And I, I think that you can go through your, 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 your television, you can go through your video collection, and you'll see that the trends are created by us. Mm -hmm. So why do I have to care right. what I'm doing next? Whatever I'm doing is what's happening. I think my last I question. I don't think that that is conceited. I don't. I think my last question is, if this exhibit is up for five more weeks, and I think you know the best time to visit an exhibition like this is after the opening, when you can have some quiet time with yourself. If somebody walked in here, unfamiliar with your work, as most people will probably be. What's the most, I don't want to say the most important thing that you hope they take away from it? It, it doesn't, what, what change in their lives do you hope that your work maybe prompts? I want it to haunt them. Haunt them. Because I, I, I think that we are a haunted people and that's not necessarily a bad thing, mm -hmm. especially when you look at what's going on in our country right now. Mm -hmm. Like it should haunt you. Mm -hmm. It should make you think. It should make you want to do better, be better, and create. Because that's the only thing that's going to save us. The only thing. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Um, and I remind you that the exhibit is here at the McDonough until April 2nd. Their hours are 11 to 4, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., Tuesday through Saturday. Stop by the museum, spend some time with these paintings and enjoy Eastside.